open your mouth and worship. There's nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody greater than you. Nobody great. Nobody, nobody great. Nobody. nobody greater than you. Oh. Can we worship for a moment? Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody greater than. Nobody greater than you. God bless you, Missionary Green. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to our Solid Rock 8 a.m. Wake Up to Worship. We are so excited that you have made a choice to join us today. We expect an, uh, an unexpected miracle from the Lord today. We, we want you to come in and clap your hands show in and then show up, right? Or show up and then show in. So I see Mun McCoy, I am so glad to see you. I see my friends, the Collins, Missionary Brooks, my 8 a.m. friends, my sister Reed, I see you. Brother Keys, I see you. Elder Lambert, I see you. And, and, and all of you, it's exciting to see your faces today because this is the day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice in it and be glad in it. We got eyes to see ears to hear, nose to smell, mouth to talk, hands to clap, and feet to thump, because I have a song like you say, if I had, if I had, but because we have the instruments to give God praise, we need to utilize it. So if we can just praise God for a second and say, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for our, the voices that we have that you've given to us because we know that God is able to do anything but fail. Come today expecting a miracle. Come today with your petitions for the Lord because this is the day that the Lord has made and rejoice in it. Amen. Now just open your mouth and worship. There's nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody greater than you. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody. Nobody greater than you. Can we worship for a moment? Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody greater than. Nobody greater than you. Serve a God like this, nobody. Nobody great. Yeah. Nobody great. Who can compare to you? you? Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? There is no nobody one. great. Hey, hey, hey. Nobody hey. great. Mm. Nobody greater than you. Now lift the sound of this place. There's nobody.
couldn't find nobody Looked high and low Still couldn't find nobody Nobody great Nobody great Can we just sing this? Because our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are high Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God Oh, said our, our God, God is greater. Our God. our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any. Oh, shut up, Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Our God. Yeah. And if our God is for us, then who could ever? stop us and if our God is with us then what could stand against and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then what could stand against yeah yeah <laughs> then what then what could stand Good morning. Father God, we thank you once again, Father God, for allowing us to be here, Father God. Father God, we thank you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus this morning. Father God, we thank you right now, Father God, to allow us to wake up, Father God, clothed in our right mind, Father God, with our mind on you this morning, Father God. Father God, we ask you right now, Father God, to Bless this service today, Father God. Father God, let your oil, Father God, run all over this service today, Father God. Where it be so strippy, Father God, it just run all off of it today, Father God. Bless it right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus this morning, Father God. Father God, come on into the sanctuary, Father God, like you've never done before, Father God. Father God, touch each and every one of us, Father God. From the crown of our head, Father God, to the sole of our feet this morning, Father God. Anoint us like you've never done before, Father God. In the name of Jesus this morning, Father God. Father God, have your way right now, Father God. Father God, have your way right now, Father God, in this service this morning, Father God. Touch right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus right now, Father God. Father God, we're seeking you early this morning, Father God, in the name of Jesus this morning, Father God. Because, Father God, we know, Father God, there's power in your name this morning, Father God. There's healing power in your name this morning, Father God. Come on in to this service this morning, Father God. Come on in like you've never done before, Father God. Rain on us this morning, Father God. Breathe on us this morning, Father God. Oh, Lord, pour your blessings down upon us right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus right now, Father God. Father God, we ask that you touch this morning, Father God. Touch the sick this morning, Father God. Touch the ones, Father God, laying in the hospital bed this morning, Father God. Anoint them right now, Father God. Heal their precious body this morning, Father God. Touch them right now, Father God. Father God, you said, Father God, it's a little thing to touch from you this morning, Father God. That's all we need right now, Father God. In the name of Jesus right now, Father God. Have your way right now, Father God, in Jesus' name, touch right now, Father God, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord, saints. I'll be reading Psalms 122. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compacted together, whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are, for there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper that love thee. 
Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palace. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say, peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thee. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. God bless everyone today. God is such a wonderful, faithful God. Amen. As the Psalms of the test just said, God is greater. God is stronger. God is awesome in his power today. So that gives us reason to praise him and welcome him into our hearts and welcome him into our homes. And wherever we are, that's where he is. And we thank him for that today. On behalf of my pastor, Gerald K. Simpkins, and of course myself, Lady Simpkins, I would like to extend a warm and hearty welcome to each and every one of you today. Just know that we love you and we love you one another. Although I might be on Zoom, I can feel the love. I can see the smiling faces. And I thank God for it today. Amen. So again, we would like to welcome you, welcome you, welcome you to this very beautiful day that the Lord has made. God bless you all. And we thank you for being here this morning. And again, from the heart of the Solid Rock family, if we have any visitors on the line, and even to ourselves, again, welcome, welcome, welcome. We love you all. Be blessed. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what you've been going through, but I got a word from the Lord. Tell him it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. Hear the word of the Lord. The worst is over. And the best is yet to come. Put your hands together. We've all been tried and tested, falling in to die for temptation. But the word of God spoke to me. This is what he said, be steadfast, immovable, always the bottom in him. The worst is over, and the best, the worst is over, and the best, I said the worst is over, and the best, the worst is over, and the best. Oh, hold on, every promise from God. Look at here, count him faithful, regardless of your test. Stand still, hold tight, don't you give up the fight. Jesus knows, yes he does, just how much you can bear. The worst is over, and the best, the worst is over, and the best, the worst is over, and the best, the worst is over.
Jesus is coming back. Your sick body is well tonight. God told me to tell you, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates, be lifted. Everlasting to hope and the peace of glory will come in. Who is the peace? Good morning, good morning. It's that time right now where everybody can be a blessing to us right now here at Solid Rock Church of God in Christ. Oh, what a blessing it is to be here this morning. This is the time where everybody can pour into it, pour into the blessing here at the house. God says, I will 
pour out a blessing to you. You pour your, just a time, you pour your tithes and offering into the house right now here at Solid Rock. It's a great honor for you guys to be with us this morning. This is the time right now we do our offering right now. Time we pay our tithes right now. This is time where God said, I will bless you, bless you abundantly. This is the time you can give back. Give back into the Lord right here, right now. So be he all you tithes into the house, the storehouse. It's a time we can just be a blessing to the Lord. Be a blessing to the Lord right here. It's time you pay your tithes and offerings. You can give four ways. You can give by the cash app. Uh, you can pay um, uh, Solid Rock uh, at the church by mail, 5970 Thornton Avenue. You can pay on PayPal. You can give by Givelify. This is the time right here now that we all can be a blessing, a blessing to our Heavenly Father, a blessing to our church, a blessing to yourself. You'd be surprised how it is to be a blessing when you pay your tithes and offering. Oh, you just don't know. Y'all, you just don't know. When you, when you give your tithes and offering, God can pour back into you. We think about it as monetary, but this is the time that God can bless you with your health, your strength, everything that's around you, your loved ones, your family, this is the time here right now. So be sure to pay your tithes. This is a 10% of your tithes and your offering. The 10% of your tithes. So pour back into this here. Like I said, this cash app, Solid Rock, uh, 5970, Givelify, uh, PayPal. Uh, you can mail it in. So come on, saints. This is the time right now that we all can do a great wonders to our Heavenly Father and also to our church. We are, we are here back in Tracy this morning. We are grateful to be back here this morning. So pour back, pour back into our storehouse. Pour back into your church. Be a, be a blessing to your church. Father God, we thank you right now. Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, for the ones that's able to give, for the ones not able to give. Father God, we ask that you bless right now, Father God. Bless this offering right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus right now, Father God. Bless them right now, Father God, 30, 60, and 100 folds, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. They just told me they did. Glory to God. You got the mic on, Tom? Bless the name of the Lord. Can you hear me now? Glory to God. Can, Can you hear, hear me now? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Listen, we are so grateful to the Lord to be here this morning. We're kind of getting it together today. Uh, we've been out of the church for a little while. Glory to God, but we back now, glory to God, and uh, I don't foresee us uh, going out again anytime soon. Looks like uh, things are changing, pandemically speaking, and so we're praising God for just health and strength right about now. Glory to God. If I had, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to continue to ask y'all for stuff. Elder just got asked you for the Lord to sow into the house. Glory to God. Thank you, Minister Green. Did a wonderful job, and I, I don't want to beseech you with a whole bunch of asking, but not for me, but for the Lord, would you give him some praise because he's been good for you? Glory to God. What you're doing is saying to him, thank you. So glory to God. If you would just clap your hands and open your mouth, glory to God. Those of you who can unmask and let us see your praise, let us see you magnify the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Come on, give him some glory because I have found without uh, any shadow of doubt that he is worthy of all of your praise. Glory to God. There is nothing, glory to God, that you have ever needed that God has not provided. Glory to God. The enemy, the fact of the matter is, if it, the enemy had his way, you'd already been gone from here. Glory to God. You'd already be out of here. Glory to God. But God had his hand upon your life. Ah, uh, yeah, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, somebody said, where would I be? Glory to God. Where would I be? Glory to God. Because can't nobody, I said, can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord can. 
So we honor the Lord this morning just because he is God. Glory to God, not because of all the things that he has done, and he has absolutely done immeasurably in our lives, but we praise God for who he is. We worship him because he is God. Glory to God, and beside him there is no other. Glory to God. What a mighty ye. Glory to God. I, I feel that presence of the Lord in this place this morning. What a mighty God we serve. I said, what a mighty God we serve. Glory to God, a, a way making God, a prayer answering God, a, a body healing God, a life changing God, a health restoring God, a peace giving God, a joy giving God. Oh, what a mighty, 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 mighty. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I'm trying to get somebody to just remember. Glory to God. Just recall the fact that if it had not been for the Lord, glory to God, who brought you over the high, if it had not been for the Lord, who caused the doctor to say, well, if it had not been for the Lord, ye, ha, glory to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That job you got that many times we never qualified for, but 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 the Lord opened the door. Glory to God. Sometimes our credit was bad and they still let us rent the apartment. Hallelujah. I'm just talking about a mighty God. I'm talking about a mighty God. Uh, yeah, ever present. Glory to God. All knowing. Glory to God. Omniscient God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We praise God for him today and we honor him because he is God. I want to encourage all of you, glory to God, this morning real quickly before we go any further. I want to remind you, glory to God, about some things that are taking place uh, here in the ministry, uh, in and about the ministry, those connected to us, glory to God. And uh, I was trying to pull it up in my uh, in my emails, but 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 thank you. Glory to God. Somebody got it up there for me. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Now, the good part about it is I made it past the third grade so I can read. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I want to say as we begin that I'm so glad you join us for praise and worship and God's word. Is that all right? So, so God bless you this morning. You woke up to worship. Uh, the next thing that I need to talk to you about is the fact that we are in, well, coming into the third week of our Winter Bible Institute. Those of you who have not been a part of this, you have missed a treat. Amen. It has been wonderful studying, uh, learning how to study the Bible or being reminded, glory to God, or even given different ways of studying the Bible so that we could, amen, not only ingest, but digest God's word. Glory to God. Uh, and we don't have to live by what other folks said it was. Glory to God. We can go in and study God's word and know for ourselves what God's word says concerning us. And so I want to encourage each of you, amen, that uh, even if you haven't been there, join in with us this week, and we'll make sure uh, on Tuesday night, we'll make sure that you get uh, the paperwork necessary to go back and do your joy work. Uh, they have renamed homework joy work, amen, glory to God, and then the other class is about the Holy Ghost, glory to God, come on, there you go, the Holy Ghost, uh, and we are, we never can know all there is concerning the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost is God. It is his spirit, and you'll never know all of God because his ways are so above, far above ours. It's like the heavens are from the earth. Amen. And so thank God for uh, Mother Jerry Rogers and Mother Dorothy Galloway who have come to be our instructors these three weeks. This is the final week. So I, let me just challenge each of you to join in with us this coming Tuesday night, beginning at 7 p.m. Glory to God. And you will absolutely be blessed. Thank you so much. Glory to God. And next, I want to share with you that our friends, our good friends, amen, the, uh, the, the church in Antioch called the Grace Temple Community Church of God in Christ will be celebrating their 20th church anniversary. Come on, clap your hands for friends. Amen. We learn how to celebrate with our friends, with those that rejoice. Amen. And that's going to be the 25th of uh, this, this month, next Friday night. 
And we want to be a part of that. Join in on Zoom. You can see, amen, how to get in there. The Zoom line is right there. Come on, join in with them. We're going to send a blessing to them. We're going to let them know we love them and we support them. Uh, glory to God. You know, the Bible tells us, and I've you heard me repeat it uh, frequently, that he that has friends must first show himself friendly. Amen. Glory to God. Well, this is absolutely our friend. Amen. And so we praise God for, amen, this church. Uh, and we're going to celebrate with them this next coming Friday night. Glory to God. Uh, the next thing I need to tell you is that the Women of Empowerment, glory to God, our state is coming together, the Women of Empowerment, uh, and they've got some dynamic teachers, glory to God. I got to tell you, uh, Dr. Amen, uh, Luana Grant, now we used to call her Dr. Luana Ross when she was here, but Dr. Luana Grant, amen, is going to be the, the guest speaker and our state supervisor is in charge. And not only that, our district, assistant district missionary, glory to God, is a part of this team, uh, glory to God. And so we want to encourage all of you to be a part of that as well. Glory to God. That's going to be on that next Saturday, the 26th. Glory to God. All right. So, uh, and finally, I need to tell you, and I'll, I'll stop after this, but uh, this is a good place to stop. Next Sunday, next Sunday is going to be, we're going to celebrate Black, Black History uh, with the youth department. Amen. This month is Black History Month. Uh, glory to God. And so uh, I want to encourage you with all that's going on. Glory to God. We thought that might stop, but it has not stopped the, the mistreatment that's taking place uh, amongst people of color and particularly those of African American or black descent. Glory to God. We're going through it. I just saw something this week. Many of you saw where the police, uh, two young teenagers got into a fight, white guy and a black kid who was the Black kid, but the white kid instigated it, but they ended up attacking the young fe black fella and uh, handcuffing him and putting their knees on him. And that whole uh, it was just disturbing young man that was got shot, Dante Wright, uh, the officer that shot him, glory to God, got two years and a one thousand dollar fine. Just heartbreaking to see how mistreatment is taking place. And so I want to encourage you, but Pastor, you're talking about politics and talking about civil rights. That's absolutely correct. Glory to God. You got truth right there. Glory to God. I, I And I'm not backing away, and I don't apologize. As a matter of fact, uh, talk about it more if you push me. Glory to God. I just want to tell you that we've got to be very careful to cover yourselves. I was with my son and grandson, one of my sons and grandson yesterday, and I was telling them, you all have to be careful. Glory to God, because there is a target on your back. Glory to God. And you've got to be careful how you go about your life. Glory to God, how you live, how you deal with folk. Glory to God. So I'm just encouraging you. And I'm saying to each one of you who are listening to me today, glory to God, we've got to celebrate our heritage. We have a rich heritage. We have a rich heritage. Oh, I wish I was talking to somebody. We have a rich heritage. We are the people of God. God has blessed us. And down all throughout history, you see uh, black folks connected everywhere you look around, including Moses' wife and going on down the road there. We are there. Glory to God. The young, the man who carried Jesus' cross helped him carry his cross. Glory to God. To God got the heel. Glory to God was a black man. And then his two sons and served with Paul. And they, they, Paul loved his mother so much that he told them to greet, glory to God, the mother uh, of Rufus, glory to God, because, and that was the son of the young man who carried the cross. So you got to see that we were there throughout history. Amen. And uh, if you keep looking, you'll see us until Jesus come back. I wish I had about five people to clap your hands and give God some praise. Amen. Glory to God. And so, Black youth are going to have Black History Month coming up this week. Glory to God. And it's going to take place. They're going to have a wonderful dinner there. Glory to God. I want to encourage all of you to support the youth department. Amen. They're going to give you two meats. I know they got fish and chicken and jerk chicken, fried chicken. They got uh, hot water cornbread and uh, glory to God, greens and uh, peach cobbler. And oh, my God. They, they, yeah. Banana put, they got it going on, amen. So I want, I want to encourage all of y'all. <laughs> We're inside the sanctuary this morning, and Mother White got up to start running towards the kitchen. Glory to God! I'm trying to tell you now. 
Glory to God. Next Sunday, uh, we will be in church as well. You can all come and show up and be a part. The youth are going to be in charge, and they have uh, a program planned for us. Amen. It's going to be a wonderful program. Thank you, Sister Bernice Turner, and all those who have supported that ministry. It is critical, saints of God, that we, amen, each one of us, amen, support one another. Glory to God. I want somebody to put in the chat box, so I, I support you, you support me. Put that in the chat box. I support you, you support me. Because what happens is when we support one another, all of us are blessed. Everybody's blessed, amen? Everybody has opportunity to make it to the next level or even bring comfort to the present living. And so I want to encourage each one of you today, amen? We're going to support our young people. We've got to keep them involved. And they're not going to be involved if we don't give them something to do, amen? God bless all of you this morning. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of the hosts who have made this morning's service uh, possible. Thank you all so very, very much. Uh, I want you to know that we love you today. <clears throat> and just, just in case, glory to God, I need to, uh, I need to assure uh, or reassure some folks. I just want you to know that I'm saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized fire and got a mind to run on and see what the end's going to be. Glory to God. Is there anybody else, glory to God, on this screen this morning, on this Zoom call, on this Facebook that saved and loved the Lord with your whole heart? Glory to God. If that's you, I want you to put it in the chat box. Just write simply saved. Glory to God. Come on, saved. Somebody sang a song. I'm saved by his power divine. Saved. Glory to God. By new life sublime. Life now is sweet as I, my joy is complete. Cause I'm saved. 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 I'm saved. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Listen. We're getting prepared for the word of the Lord uh, this morning. I want to just kind of connect with a little bit of the Bible study that's been going on in the Bible Institute. Glory to God. I want to uh, just bring for you a reminder. I had a conversation this morning with uh, the assistant mother of the church, and we were talking about uh, the fact that you never get it all. Glory to God. You get it this way from somebody. Glory to God. And you get the same thing uh, and you get truth in, in another direction from another perspective from somebody else. Glory to God. We got it 20 years ago. We got it 10 years ago. We got it five years ago and we're getting it again now. But then the Bible says this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night for then shall you make your way prosperous and then shall you have good success the bible also reminds us and admonishes us indeed uh glory to god to study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed because you have uh, the ability by the holy ghost to rightly divide the word of truth i wish i was talking to five people this morning glory to god somebody coming up with some stuff talking about well to me it means i understand what it means to you but what's that what what does the Holy Ghost say that he sang in the word of the Lord? Because scripture is of no private interpretation, amen, but was written to us by holy men who were inspired by the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And so if you want to know what the Holy Ghost is saying in the word of God, ask the Holy Ghost. You got to spend some time in God's word. And so today I want to go back just a little bit and remind you about what we talked about the other night, what we have been talking about for these last 24 years of ministry. I want to talk about an aspect of who God is, glory to God, and the fact that this aspect, as well as all of who God is, this aspect is particularly necessary for us in this dispensation of life, in this time of our living here in the earth. Is that all right? After the sermonic selection, glory to God, has come forward, uh, glory to God, then I'm going to come back and we're going to deal with the word of the Lord. Is that all right? Glory to God, I'm going to try and get these devices working so we can do that. Glory to God. Listen, I need about five or six folks to give God some real praise right about now. Just take about 15 seconds. Don't cut it short. Glory to God. I made it short. Don't cut it short. But you can't just clap your hands. You got to open your mouth and give him some praise. Come on and do that right about now. Glory to God. Glory to God. I shall have, I shall have what I decree, what I decree. 
Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. It belongs to me. Simple word, believe it. Say, I shall have. I shall have. What I decree. What I decree. Yes, I believe. Whatever God has decreed to you, speak into the atmosphere. Lay your hands on yourself this time. I shall have, I shall have what I decree. Yes, I. I, I, shall have, I shall have what I decree. Yes, I believe it belongs to me. So I'm going to. Gotta open up your mouth and speak it to But you gotta believe it in your heart and in your spirit. Speak into the atmosphere. Speak into the atmosphere. Just walk around your house and begin to speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it to Whatever it is, just speak, 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 speak. Open up your mouth and open up your mouth and open up your mouth and declare, declare, Asha.
right where you are, speaking to the of Praise the name of the Lord. We honor the Lord for each one of you that have joined us this morning. And we declare the blessings of the Lord on each one of your lives. Glory to God. Glory to God. You hear me? Glory to God. All right. We declare the blessings of the Lord over your life. And we know that God is able. How many know God is able? Glory to God. I said, how many of y'all know that God is able? Whatever your circumstance, whatever your situation, uh, just know that God is able. Glory to God. And uh, somebody said he can do what no other power, Holy Ghost power, can do. Amen. Glory to God. So we praise God this morning uh, for each one of you. Let me have a word of prayer with you, and uh, then we shall go to the word of the Lord. Uh, I'm going to begin with a very familiar passage of Scripture found in the book of St. John, chapter 14. Glory to God. Those of you who have your Bibles, and I know that's all of you all, glory to God, you have your Bibles and you're in your church clothes because you're in church, amen? Glory to God. And you don't have any other devices on, the television, CNN, ah, the NBA, glory to God. They're not on right now. You just own with the Lord, you in church. Speak it, Pastor. Okay, glory to God. Come on, join in with us. Glory to God. Father, we love you today. We bless you and praise you. We magnify you. We indeed lift up your holy name. We give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise. Because God, there is nobody like you. Nobody can do us like you do. Nobody can heal our bodies. Nobody, God, can save our souls. God, you've been good to us down through the years. You brought us through dangers, as Mom and him used to say, seen and unseen. God, you blessed us in every circumstance and in every situation of our lives. Even when things look like they went bad, somehow, somehow, God, I don't know how you did it, but somehow you turned it around to make it work together for our good. And so our great love and appreciation is for and to you. God, have your way today. Speak to this, your servant. God, just let me encourage the hearts of your people. Glory to God. I, I, I want to make them know, God, that you never leave them and you'll never forsake them, that forever you're with them in every situation. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done and what you're doing, and thank you for what you're going to do by faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If I had 17 people to clap your hands and give God some praise, glory to God. That means some of those in the sanctuary got to clap your glory to God. That's it. You got to give God some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise the name of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah to the name of God. Let me be, begin talking to you, glory to God, from this particular passage of scripture is found in John chapter 14. Glory to God is a familiar passage of scripture to many. Glory to God and maybe less familiar to some. But let me summarize the first portion of it. Glory to God. It is Jesus uh, having an appointment uh, in Samaria. He had an appointment in Samaria. Now, glory to God, sometimes the folks walking with you, glory to God, even though they were walking with you, they don't understand you. Glory to God. You've got some friends right now. They love you and they're walking with you. But some of the stuff, glory to God, that you have to do, uh, they don't quite understand. Glory to God. They they, they, they don't quite get it. Uh, you can't be mad with them because, glory to God, how can they know what's going on with you? And the truth of the matter is sometimes we don't know what's going on with us. That doesn't happen to be the case with Jesus. because, But when Jesus had an appointment in Samaria, Glory to God. He had to go uh, because there was a particular person that he needed to meet. Uh, and his appointment was not in an office. Glory to God. It was not anywhere. Glory to God in any building, but rather his appointment was at a well. 
His appointment was at a well. Glory to God. And his appointment wasn't with a high-ranking official. Glory to God. In fact, his appointment was with some folks, glory to God, with a person that they didn't even get along. Their nations didn't care for one another. Their families didn't care for one another. But understand, glory to God, that Jesus loves everybody. Somebody all put that in the chat box. Glory to God. Somebody's going through some things. Somebody's dealing with some stuff. And you're wondering, Lord, why? Glory to God. I'm that maybe that's none of y'all. Glory to God. Maybe you've never asked the Lord why, but somebody's going through, I just believe, going through something, and you're saying, Lord, why? Glory to God. Well, I need to tell you that there is purpose in your trouble. There is purpose in your trouble. There's purpose. God has purpose, and you are on purpose. You're not an accident. You're not an afterthought. Glory to God. You are on purpose. Glory to God. And, and as I said earlier, God turns all of even the difficulty around and makes it work together for your good. And so he meets with, glory to God, a woman at a well. Glory to God. And when he meets with the woman at the well, now it's interesting how Jesus does stuff because before he met with the woman, he sent the disciples away. Glory to God. You know how sometimes, glory to God, some folks with you, they might not say nothing, but they got that look on their face like, what you doing? Glory to God. Well, Jesus didn't even want the woman to have to see the look. Glory to God. He needed to talk to her himself. And so when he met the woman at the well, he says to the woman, glory to God. He says, glory to God. He give me a drink. Verse number, uh, verse number seven. He says, give me a drink. Uh, for the disciples had gone away and he said, give me a drink. And the woman asked him a question. He said, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask me, being a Samaritan, to give you something to drink. Glory to God. Uh, sometimes folks are not necessarily being smart with you. They just don't know where you're coming from. Yeah, glory to God. Some of you can got some mad with some folks who really all they were trying to do is figure out where you was coming from. They were trying, they've been misused by so many people. They've been mistreated by so many people. They, games been run on them by so many people. I had some people call me the other day on the phone uh, and they were, you know, it's one of those numbers. And when they called me, glory to God, they said, uh, Gerald Simpkins, I said, yes. Now, sometimes when the call come in, I said, never mind, y'all forget me. No, thank you. I'm not interested. I accidentally picked up the phone. Glory to God. I accidentally turned it on. But in this case, I said, uh, yeah, this is what can I do for you? Because I'm just fully waiting for somebody to try and sell me, glory to God, a bridge that ain't been built yet. I'm, I'm just waiting on somebody trying to tell me that if I put $20 in, they'll give me $100 back. You know, one of them things. Glory to God. But, but when that person began to talk to me, they had, uh, glory to God, an opportunity, a real, truly an opportunity for me to be blessed. Glory to God. To reduce some things that I'm paying and I want to reduce it. So that was great. And what I'm trying to tell you is that deals with you is not trying to run a game on you. Everybody that asks you a question is not trying to challenge what you're saying. And in this case, this woman, glory to God, it was perplexing to her that a Jew was speaking to her, not to mention the fact that a Jewish rabbi was speaking to her. Glory to God. A, a man of that stature was speaking to her. And so she said, how is it that you being a Jew speaks to a woman who is a Samaritan? Because the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Glory to God. But Jesus messed her up because Jesus didn't get mad. But he came back, and if I read that, y'all got your Bibles right. I know they open. Uh, John chapter 14, verse number 10. I thought I'd tell you again. Glory to God. He says to us in verse number 10, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, glory to God, and he would have given you uh, living water. Somebody say living water. Put that in the chat box. Living water. Living water. If you knew who it was you were talking to, Jesus didn't get mad with the woman. He didn't go off on her. He didn't get sarcastic. He didn't cut her off. She asked a legitimate question because of the circumstances we're dealing with today. Glory to God. Folks is asking questions. Uh, you know, everybody's, you know, many people, I should say, are running games out here. And uh, this 
woman is trying to figure out why are you talking to me? Don't about give me some water. Well, first of all, it was the wrong time of the day to, for the woman to be at the well. Glory to God. And then when the women did go to the well, they would go to the well in groups and that was where they would have their conversations. That was where they would interact with one another. But did you notice that this woman came to the well by herself? Why did she come to the well by herself? Well, she didn't know that Jesus knew exactly why she came to the well by herself because glory to God, Jesus explains to her that, listen, uh, later on, he tells her, you uh, need to go get your husband. She said, I don't have no husband. He said, I, you did say, oh, you said that exactly right. Uh, matter of fact, we would say a few years ago, the folks will say, I know you're right. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're right. You don't have. Say where you are. Let me get back to my story. Ah, I digress. Let me get back to my story. So Jesus deals with this woman. He said, listen, if you knew who was asking you for a drink of water, you would have asked him to give you water and he would have given you everlasting water, water that just keeps on flowing and flowing and flowing and Gee, glory to God. When I think about it, it makes me feel good on the inside. Uh -huh. You would have asked him and he would have given you everlasting water. Uh, he says to us in verse 14, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give, that person uh, will become in them a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Glory to God. you got to understand something. The living water that Jesus speaks of to this woman, glory to God, uh, he also talks about in John chapter 14, glory to John, chapter 7, excuse me, chapter 7, and uh, glory to God, because Jesus had come together. Well, since you got your Bible, you can turn there. John chapter 7, glory to God. Some of you got your Bible, glory to God, on, on paper. You got it on your iPad. You got it on your iPhone. You got it on your Android. You got glory to God. That it, You don't have to never go nowhere without the Bible these days. You, right in the chat box, keep the word with you always. Glory to God. Keep the word with you always. Don't leave home without it. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And so in John chapter 7 and verse 37, Jesus was at a feast. Now he's getting ready. I told you all I was going to talk about a couple of stories, but, but, but I'm coming to a particular point in this one. Uh, now, I just got through talking to you about the woman at the well, and Jesus said he was going to give her this everlasting water, this living water. Glory to God. Uh, but in here, he says to them, glory to God, uh, on the last day of the feast, and they were getting, at this point, they were going after Jesus. They were trying to get him. Glory to God. The Pharisees and, and everybody was coming against him. And individuals, glory to God, who were upset with themselves, glory to God, were mad with Jesus. You ever had somebody who was mad with themselves, but they blamed you? Ah, uh, I know y'all don't know nothing about that. <laughs> glory to God. But some folk, glory to God, they really coming against you, but they want to go and get the person in the mirror. Glory to God. That's who they really talking to. They blaming you for being a liar and all they do is lie. Glory to God. They blaming you for being mean and they the meanest folks you ever run into. They blaming you for being untrustworthy and you can't tell them nothing without them telling everybody else. Anyway. Let me, let me get back to my word. <laughs> so on the last day of the feast, y'all, glory to God, I got, look at my time here. But on the last day of the feast, Jesus gets up. All of these folks is coming against him. Everybody's trying to tear him down. All of these Pharisees have got to get him. And, and what happens is he's got some folks who want to believe. They want to trust him. Glory to God. He got some folks who really need him and they know they need a savior. Glory to God. But then he's got these other folks with the loud voices. He got the other folks that's always talking loud and saying nothing. Glory to God. There I go back with the old school stuff. Glory to God. But he's always got somebody that's always trying to convince you not to be blessed. You ever got anybody in your life, they mad when God bless you? 
But they want you to shout and do a jig, glory to God, when God get them a new car, glory to God. But when you get somebody in your life that loves you and wants to bless you, they trying to find something negative with the person, glory to God, so you'll be lonely like they are, glory to God. I don't know what I'm talking about here this morning, but, but I want you to understand on the last day of the feast, let me get back to my scripture on the last day of the feast, glory to God, they was coming after Jesus. Yeah, they was looking for him. They were searching the city. They was looking through, where is it? He's supposed to be here. He a rabbi, glory to God. Where is it? They don't know that Jesus was already in the house. Glory to God. He was already there. He just wasn't going to the front and make no big scene. Glory to God. He didn't have the disciples walk kids. Glory to God with a big standing talking about Jesus is behind us. Glory to God. Jesus on board. Glory to God. He didn't walk around that. Jesus just showed up quietly and at the last moment Jesus just quietly eases up to the podium. He begins to share with them glory to God the messianic message. Glory to God. He began to let them know was the Messiah. Uh -huh. He was the one that they had heard about all those years. Glory to God. I know y'all was looking for somebody coming out of Galilee, but the Bible said, glory to God, I come out of Nazareth. Glory to God. He come out of the hood. Glory to God. Yeah, Nazareth was the hood, y'all. Glory to God. Uh, in matter of fact, they used to say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Uh, I'm from the Crescent Vallejo. They sometimes wonder, can anything good come out of the Crescent? Anyway, Glory to God, I'm just trying to tell you something here. Uh, Jesus says, if anyone thirsts, here we go with that water again. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this he spoke of about the spirit. Uh, so I want to connect with the Bible study we've been in, amen, in our Bible Institute uh, when he talked about the Holy Ghost. And I want you to understand that the Holy Ghost is a refreshing spring of water. The Holy Ghost is a refreshing spring of water. Anybody going through anything, glory to God, that's troubling you, that's frustrating you, that's disappointing you, that's attacking you, that's weighing heavy on your heart, glory to God. Anybody carrying some weights on your shoulder that have begun to be heavier than you want to bear, anybody dealing with some stuff you can't seem to shake off. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost will wash it off. The Holy Ghost will give you strength. The Holy Ghost will refresh. Fresh you, it is a refreshing spring of water. I calm down because I got to get to my second point. Point number two, glory to God. The Holy Ghost leads and guides. He is a compass of truth. I said the Holy Ghost leads and guides. He is a compass of of truth. Glory to God. You still got your Bible? Did you put it away? You know, sometime when the preacher's preaching, y'all read the scripture just a few minutes, then you take the Bible and put it, as soon as you get through, you put it away. If you had it in the first place, you put it away. Glory to God. But I need you to get it this morning. That pastor, this is Sunday morning service. This ain't Bible study. It's Sunday morning service Bible study. Glory to God. You just got to get it all together. Glory to God. Listen, because it's not really what I say that makes the difference. I, you know, I'm, I'm putting this meal together and I'm putting some gravy on it. But the fact of the matter is, if, if the meat ain't right, it ain't going to make no good gravy. Scripture says, John chapter 16, verse number five. John, St. John. When I say John, I mean St. John. I know there's a few Johns in the, you know, St. John, John chapter, John 1, John 2, John 3. But this is St. John. It says, but now, verse number 16, uh, chapter 16, verse number 5, but now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, glory to God, where I'm going. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Somebody say truth. Somebody say truth. Write it in the chat box, truth, because you're going to hear this a few more times in this particular point. 
He said, it is advantageous to you that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, somebody said the Holy Ghost, the helper will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, glory to God, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. There's a whole lot to unpack in that scripture. And I might not be able to get through it all this morning. Uh, glory to God. I might have to come back on another portion of this thing. But let me just tell you where we stand on this thing. He said truth. Come on, say truth. The Holy Ghost, glory to God, not only is it a refreshing spring of living water, but it is one that leads and guides into truth. We have so many lying fruit. I had to catch myself. We have so many lying people, preachers, glory to God, who will get up in the pulpit they, and they are t- they're great orators. They have skills. They have the ability to turn a phrase, but it ain't true. They will lie in the name of Jesus just as quickly as they can say their own name. Dealing with some folk who have been talking, it blows me away how folk can get so self-absorbed that they want to become Messiah. Telling folk, for the God, the only ones going to heaven is us. You ain't the only one going to heaven. Glory to God. God is not so little that he make your little bitty folk the only ones making it to heaven. Heaven going to have a whole lot of empty mansions if y'all the only ones going. It's going to be vacancy for days up there. Can I talk about truth? He leads and guides. Bible declares thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. I talked to you all about that the other day. Glory to God. Uh, Glory to God. So you got to understand that he, the Holy Ghost, is going to, amen, uh, tell us what truth is all about, but he's also going to convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Listen, saints of God, you ain't got to be trying to send folks to hell. The Holy Ghost, the, the Holy Ghost know who is, is going. He know who going. Glory to God. You are, they going to hell. You don't know. Glory to God. You don't know what glory to God, what they've done. It might have been one o'clock in the morning when the Holy Ghost woke them up and they got up and said, Lord, I'm sorry for doing what I've done. God, I'm sorry. Now, if somebody is unrepentant, they going to hell. If they're unrepentant, they're going to hell. The Bible makes that clear. But you don't get to decide you ain't the gatekeeper. You don't get to this side because you don't know when a person's heart has been pricked. You don't know. And so our best efforts is to just be spent on bringing folks to God. Letting folks know that you need the Holy Ghost to be able to have a compass of truth. Come on, say a compass. What are you talking about, Pastor? A compass? compass tells you what direction you're going. A compass will tell you which way you ought to go to get to where you're trying to get. Can I talk to somebody? Glory to God. Some folks, glory to God, got a compass, but it's broke. Ain't no arm in it. Glory to God. The arm that fell off the little thing to hold it together. And so it no longer turns when you turn. Glory to God. It, even if the arrow's there, it don't move. You turn to the left, the arrow's still going to the right. You turn all the way around in a circle, the arrow now is behind you. You got to understand that the Holy Ghost is a sure compass of righteousness. You need to understand, glory to God, you got to understand something here. The Holy Ghost, glory to God, is the one that convicts us, but he also declares righteous. He declares us righteous by faith. You were with this in the Sunday school lesson today, but I need to tell you that, glory to God, you got to understand that we have a whole lot of stuff that's Pharisaic in nature. 
Glory to God. We have told folks they can't do a whole lot of stuff that the Bible has not said. I'm about to lose my church. But I grew up, glory to God, when, and we talked about this in Sunday school a few weeks ago, but, but I grew up when you couldn't do nothing in the, the Pentecostal church, particularly the church of God in Christ and others, glory to God, not just us, but others. Glory to God, you couldn't do nothing. Don't wear no pants, glory to God. Don't wear no makeup. Don't have no toes showing in your shoes. Don't no heels showing in your shoes. Your dress got to be dragging the ground. You can't show your arms. You can't, women can't cut their hair. Glory to God. Brothers better come to the poor pit. First, they couldn't come with a tie. Then they had to wear a tie. Glory to God. You can't come in with a colored shirt. It's got to be white. Don't go to the movies. Can't play no ball. I'm just saying we have put stuff together that the Holy Ghost never told us to put together. We don't live by the law anymore. We live by faith. Now, what do you say, Pastor? We can do anything you want to do and still be saying, absolutely not. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. So he can lead you and guide you into all truth. Glory to God. And if you mess up, glory to God. How many know the Holy Ghost knew before you messed up, you mess up? The Holy Ghost knew why you were up you messing up the holy ghost knew after you got through to tell you to go back and say i'm sorry repent and get it right somebody write in the chat box the truth of repentance the truth of repentance i'm gonna say it again so you can get the truth of some of us learn how to spell you know phonetically repentance You need to get this thing, glory to God. Stop acting like you just keep on going and going because God ain't, ain't got you yet. He ain't going to get you. Just because God ain't got you yet don't mean he agree with what you're doing. You better get right before you get God. I know that was a little ebonically spoken, but y'all know what I'm saying, glory to God. Yeah. Glory to God. Sometimes the stuff we're having to deal with, glory to God, the difficulty we face. I don't know why the Lord letting this happen because you getting got. Because God has got tired of you disrespecting him and turning your ear off when he's speaking to you. Yeah, I might not be nobody in your house, but those of you in the sanctuary and if there's somebody in your house, I want you to look at him with all sincerity and say the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Some of y'all didn't say nothing. The Holy Ghost is talking to you right now. Get it right. Ask God to lead you into truth. Have your way in my spirit. Have your way in my soul. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost leads us and guides us into all truth. And just because he ain't got you don't mean he won't get you. Isn't it interesting when God reveals who you are? And most often it happens, you know, the devil, the, you know, it's interesting. The devil is a cold, this is an old word again, cold blooded. You know what I mean? Just cold blood. Glory to God. He just, he gets you when everybody watching. <laughs> he, 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 you getting all the way with it. You party over here. You know, you weren't supposed to be in that house. But he wait. Till everybody's looking at you. And then he shows the video of you talking about. I'm trying to tell you something, saints of God. No, yeah, no, I didn't do like this. I saw you. I, I, I don't know nothing about that. No. I wasn't never there. Plus, I ain't never had that kind of money to just throw away like that. <laughs> Let me give you a scripture before y'all think, I said, just making up stuff. No, 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 no. I got some, I got some scripture to back it up and I'm getting ready to close too. The apostle Paul declares in Romans chapter eight, verse number one, very familiar passage of scripture. Glory to God, because I know you still have your Bible. 
you know, I haven't tuned up. I and hummed a bit. The, the keyboard player, he right here. Thank you. Amen. Brother Isaiah, he right here, but I'm not even, I'm not hooking up this morning. Glory to God. I'm teaching Sunday. This is Sunday teaching. We're going to the scripture. Romans chapter eight, verse number one, it says, therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation. You are not in condemnation. You don't have to walk in guilt. Glory to God. But check this out. Who are you talking about? He says to them which are in Christ Jesus. He says, who do not walk after the flesh, but what? After the spirit. Glory to God. And so there is condemnation. Glory to God. If you're walking after the flesh and not after the spirit. Now, there are individuals who are unrepentant, who are walking according to the flesh. They're living according to their flesh. Their flesh dictates what they do. It leads and guides them. Glory to God. You are in condemnation. And when folks are connected to God and you love God and you do some stuff or you're doing some things you know you shouldn't be doing, how many know the Holy Ghost condemns you? If he's in you, he going to condemn you. Jesus would have lied when he says he shall lead you and guide you into all truth. And so I'm sharing with you now, if you feel that condemnation, if you feel the Holy Ghost talking to you, that's the time to say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me of what I said. Forgive me, God, for calling them that. that forgive me, Lord. I'm going to take them their money back. Forgive me, Lord. I'm sending their husband back home. I'm sending their wife back. God, forgive me. Can I? I'm trying to you to get this thing down in your spirit. I'm trying to make it just as plain as possible. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you. And he is a refreshing spring of water. When you're going through your trouble, when you're going through difficulty, with troubled times, glory to God, when the, when the enemy has placed a whole lot of dirt and, and mess upon the muck and the mire over your life, you need to be washed off. You need something that can clean you up and glory to God. You need something that continually fills you and calms this thirst that we have to be connected with God. Understand that there's a part built inside of you that desires to please God, to be in the presence of the law. It's in you. That's when you find, that's why you find yourself out of position, out of place. You feel glory to God. Anybody ever been walking with God? And then y'all don't have to say, man, put it in the chat. I didn't know this between me and you. Glory to God. But you ever been in a place where you were walking with God and then you started drifting away? Glory to God. And you find yourself so far back away from God that you needed, glory to God, some binoculars to see the will of God for your life. Glory to God. You ever been in a place like that and you can feel the presence of the Holy Ghost drawing you back in, convicting you down in your spirit? Can't nobody hear it but you. Glory to God. As the Holy Ghost. And you could be talking to somebody else, but you know you're in the wrong place. You can be talking and in a relationship and you know you're in the wrong relationship. You can be going to God listening to some stuff that you know you ought not be listening to and the Holy Ghost is convicting you. You could, could be putting something on and the Holy Ghost said that's not for you to wear. I don't need to come up with these particular glory to God guidelines and rules. The Holy Ghost got some. He know how to talk to you. He said, the word of God say, be modest. So let me close this morning. As I share with you the word of the Lord. Somebody just put in the chat box the word of the Lord. Thank you all for joining us on Facebook and on Zoom. But put in the chat box the word of the Lord, because ultimately it is the word of God, the spirit of God, and God the Father that we must be accountable to. Our desire is to please God. Everybody who has a desire to please God, lift both your hands and say, Lord, help me right now. 
And let me tell you how you do this. Galatians chapter five. I'm coming back in just a moment, y'all, to finish that statement I just made to you. But in Galatians chapter five, verse number 16, and again, I state, I know you got your Bible. Paul says to the church at Galatia, I say then, and he gives them some powerful words to live by here. He said, walk in the spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of your flesh. Come on, somebody, that's right. Somebody go ahead, write in the chat box, walk in the spirit, walk in the spirit, walk in the spirit. They used to sing, say this phrase, the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. It's not pleasing your auntie. It's not pleasing your mama, even big mama. But it's in the will of God because I don't care who they are as much as you love them. They're fallible. They're human beings. They're subject to error. But the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, can never be wrong. He is infallible. We got a little fella in. Let him on. Got a little fella in here, and he's getting ready to walk up to the pulpit. He's getting ready to do his job. Glory to God. He just fine. But the scripture says, walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit of God. 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 And you won't fulfill the lust of your flesh, the things your flesh desires. I'm not going to get to this next point the next time I preach, because this is a good one. I'll bring it to you next time. Glory to God. I'm going to ask everybody to stand wherever you are, in your home. Glory to God. On your job, just take just a few seconds. This won't be long. But I'm asking each of you right now to surrender to God's will, to be obedient to that which God is speaking to you right now. I'm not speaking what I'm saying of my own, but I'm speaking what I believe the Holy Ghost has dropped in my spirit to share with you today. The Holy Ghost. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Somebody said they call him the Holy Spirit. He the same somebody. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. He's speaking to you today, and he wants your mind. He wants your heart. He wants your will to align itself with his will for your life. Come on, lift your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for everything. I've done wrong. Forgive me, Lord. Holy Ghost, reign in my life. Holy Ghost, have your way in my mind, in my body, and in my activities. Lead me and guide me into all truth. Come on, say, Holy Ghost, be my compass. Father, this morning I lift up the individuals who have lifted up their hands to you. God, some are being reclaimed and brought back to the place they need to be in you. Yes, God, we have a tendency to drift. We have a tendency, God, sometimes we don't even know we've drifted until we're so far away that we can't reach out and touch you. But God, I don't care where we are. You never leave us. You never forsake us. You declared, God, that a good person falls down seven times but gets back up again because though they fall, they shall not utterly be cast down. These are your babies. These are your children. And so, come on, say, Lord, forgive me and save me. Restore me in Jesus' name. It is so. Say it again. It is so. It is so. I know this is going to be a little add-on, but say this, and it shall not be otherwise. Come on, give God some praise, each one of you. Give God some praise. I don't hear you. You can't praise him with just your hands. You've got to open your mouth. Come on, come on. you got to say something. The Bible says, glory to God, with the heart, man, believe what with the mouth, confession is made. 
Glory to God. You got to say it. You got to, you got to send it in the atmosphere. Glory to God. You got to do that. He said, glory to God. Uh, glory to God. Clap you people and shout unto the Lord. You got to use your mouth. Glory to God. But check this out as I close. Check this out. I know I said I was closing, but just understand this. That the devil is the prince of the power of the air. So when you make noise by clapping your hands and opening your mouth, you're disrupting his activities in the atmosphere. You're disrupting his activity. You're causing him to say, kuh, 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 kuh. he's trying to send you some negative and you're just like, because you've disrupted his communication with your praise to God. Now, Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord today. We thank you for the people of God. And we ask God that you bless us now, even as we leave this place, this service, God. We join again in just a little while for Sunday school and then mid-morning worship. But God, you go with us and guide us and keep us, God. Calls us to have a hunger and thirst for the word of the Lord, for the word of the Lord, to read your Bible, to go and find the Bible and dust it off, to find that Bible app in our phone and spend some time reading it. And we'll give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless for the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and the people of God said amen, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.